Okay, now you know that uh, we're talking about uh, microcontrast and a lens's ability or inability to differentiate between details of more and more nearly identical or very similar tonal value. And now a lens, now all things being equal, we're disregarding the camera. We're disregarding lens IQ also. We're talking about something else that is perceived both as depth and uh, as sharpness. Now, but we're talking about specifically micro contrast. Now, right now, we're, we're going to also be forgetting about render depth. Render depth would be uh, comparatively, um, you know, a five element uh, wonderful prime lens versus, you know, an identical focal length of like a 20 element super zoom. So now, of course, as you know from the prior video that the... Uh, that the Y suffix on these images are from Canon lenses. And in a second, I'm going to show you a Sigma Art versus a, uh, a, uh, a uh, Zeiss uh, planar. And uh, right over here, we have on the, uh, the other image, we have an X, we have uh, the Zeiss lens. Now let's compare just these two. Let's just assume both of these lenses are identically sharp, which they're not, but they're, they're pretty close, okay? Let's just assume that. You know, for sake of argument, all things being equal, we're ignoring the camera, and uh, we're ignoring uh, the fact that there's a minor difference in sharpness between the two. We know, of course, that the Zeiss is sharper, but ultimately that uh, increased sharpness on the Zeiss does not contribute to this disparity versus this over here. Now this looks fuzzy and unsharp, but all things being equal, this uh, image over here is uh, equally sharp if we take uh, into consideration and reduce the fact that they're both of equal sharpness. So why does this one look sharper? Well, we're talking about translational or perceptual depth. It's not that this one looks unsharp, which of course it does, it's that uh, the contrast, the micro contrast that exists between differentiating out the details of greater and greater, greater uh, very, very similar or, or nearly identical tonal values is lost in uh, the actual uh, translation, the perceptual depth, uh, due to the lack of micro contrast of this Canon lens versus this Zeiss lens. Now here, of course, the branches out here in the wintertime look uh, very crisp and contrasted against the white snow, which is kind of rendered in cyan, but, you know, obviously it uh, needs a little bit more exposure to make the snow uh, whiter, but, I mean, this is an evening shot, so this is what snow looks like to the eyes. I mean, it's not bright sunlight, so, you know, snow does look like this. It's reflecting the sky, but also if you actually look here in the footprints, you can actually see, and within the footprints, you can actually see gradation of the footprints where over here, you can't, and one would superficially think that this, well, this lens is not as sharp. That's not lens IQ, okay? It is not uh, sharpness or lack thereof between the two. It is the actual micro contrast of the tonal values, which has not been expressed from where the light is gathered to where it actually hits the sensor and processed and uh, slapped onto your SD or compact flash card. So ignoring the cameras, and of course we can't ignore the cameras because there are a lot of variables, but also ignoring lens IQ, we have three ultimate things uh, that uh, relate to a perceived sharpness. One's being lens IQ, which we're ignoring. The second being uh, the micro contrast, wherein the perceptual depth due to tonal gradation, which is present on the Zeiss lens over here, um, with a spectrum of very low light of co close uh, tonal foregrounds and backgrounds, uh, and or also the tonal gradation within uh, the subject itself uh, has a greater expression, therefore greater separation and better perceived depth. But of course we've also left out uh, the binocular disparity and parallax of like a low element count prime lens versus like a crappy zoom lens of the same focal length or just uh, even a crappy inferior uh, prime lens of another manufacturer. You know, this is some of the stuff expressed in the high-end Nikkor lenses and the Zeisses and the Voigtlanders. It's definitely not expressed uh, by the Sigma. Now, people asked me yesterday, well, you know, show us some examples. You know, talk is cheap, and uh, I, of course, would be the first one to agree with you. So let's uh, take a look at S1 here. Um, this is a, a Sigma 35 millimeter arch. This is a 13 element prime lens. Now you can see over here, um, uh, I forget the exact depth of field on this, uh, over here that, uh, of course this is a capture, but we, we have a, a perfectly sharp lens, but the actual, everything over here is muddy. You can see a white milky film and you're thinking, well, that's fog or, 
you know, that's just the fact that it's uh, out of the depth of field. That's not the case. And in this case, it is the fact that uh, the microcontrast within the sigma lens is very poor. Now, photography isn't an art. And I know you're going to think, oh, you pixel peeping a hole. But it is the case that, you know, there are a numerous amount of mental midgets and pseudo intellectual morons that uh, say that uh, this 3D effect is snake oil or that micro contrast just doesn't exist. And. But this is absolute BS. We do know that it exists. And you can call this pixel peeping all you want, but you want the most to be there to hit your sensor so you can manipulate them. If it ain't there to begin with, then there ain't much to manipulate and post. Okay, we all have to agree on that. Okay, let's take a look at, a look at another image. I could get it to come up, which apparently it is up already. There we go. Here's another uh, Sigma lens. Here you can see that uh, while seemingly this, this is a sharp uh, image, it is the case that a lot of the contrast is not present. This is also a 35 millimeter Sigma. Now here's his ice lens. Okay, now I don't have any download links for you on this, but even these captures are enough to be readily apparent. You can see how this pops. You can think that, well, there's, uh, you know, a lot of this is the exact same color, so this is where something is both A, very, very important in a low contrast scene or a low light scene or an image to be converted to black and white. This is where micro contrast becomes God. Micro contrast becomes God if A, you're shooting low light stuff or, you know, you've got detail that you want to capture. Uh, in the shadows, or uh, you've got something like this where everything is gray or everything is brown, so you really got to separate out the tonal values between you know three or uh, four different uh, you know uh, shades of uh, of brown here, or you plan on converting this to black and white. I mean, you can try to bump that up if you got a crappy sigma lens by using a uh, you know, a filter or applying a filter in Photoshop, you don't really want to use a colored filter on DSLR because you're only exposing one third of the photo sites to one particular spectrum. So you shouldn't be using filters on your lens uh, for black and white rendering like that, but just uh, applying it in post. But the less you have to do in post, the better. I mean, everybody knows that, you know that, and I know that. So this is where micro contrast becomes God. And uh, that really applies to about 60% of shots. You've got uh, the necessity to express out all these little gradations here, which are very minuscule, or you have something in the shadows that uh, needs to be... Uh, all right, why well, yeah, Z1 will come up. There we go. Here we go. This is uh, also uh, the macro, uh, excuse me, not the macro, uh, the Distagon 35mm F2 Zeiss lens, which I recently got done making a video about. This is a conversion uh, from color to uh, black and white. And uh, although this isn't a high resolution shot, you can see what I'm talking about here. All these finite tonal gradations, especially over here in the dark side of her hair and in the face and in the shirt. I mean, if you've got a lens that ha doesn't have good micro contrast, it's both going to look fuzzy and it's not going to render well in black and white. And it's going to look muddy like the shots that I've uh, already shown you out of this. I mean, this muddy shot, for example. I mean, oh my God, that's just horrible. Here's another Sigma Art. This is also the Sigma Art 35mm, uh, um, which, by the way, too, the Sigma Art costs exactly as much as the Zeiss. And any crack-smoking idiot out there is uh, unquestionably a mental midget that's, uh, snippin', that's sniffing hippie farts that thinks that you want something like this. It's like, well, I can choose between the Sigma Art, which is an inferior piece of crap, and or I can buy a you know a Carl Zeiss, um, you know, which is going to last forever, is constructed extremely well, and uh, has an incredible micro contrast. You know, what's what's your choice? I mean, both of them are basically nine hundred dollars. Anybody see Sigma's got ads in every magazine all over the damn place, and Zeiss doesn't. Okay, um, but who would choose this? I mean, do you see how muddy and horrific this looks? I mean, it's just horrible. The tonal gradation here is not present. I'm not saying the Sigma is not a sharp lens, however, they do have uh, issues uh, with consistency in their production, which is, of course, another issue altogether. I already showed you that one. Let's show you uh, Sigma, Sigma 4, uh, Z1, Z4. I showed you Z4, Z3. Here we go. Here's an, the uh, 
This is the uh, 35 millimeter F2 Distagon, the lens I recently got to make. How do you think uh, the Sigma would actually uh, render this uh, image in its micro contrast, especially over here where we have the shadow? We have all these gradations of tones of the uh, of the wood in the shadow. This would be rendered as milky looking mud. I mean, it just would be. It would be rendered as milky looking mud on a Sigma Art Series. Both lenses uh, cost the same amount of money. So why on earth would you why on earth would you want that? It makes no sense. It just makes no damn sense. I don't get it. Let me see, I've got Z1 here. Oh yeah, I've already got Z1 up. I forgot that I had Z1 up. Excuse me about that. Let me go back to Z1 here. Yeah, Z1 must have got deleted. Z2, the Zs are all uh, the uh, Zeiss uh, 35 millimeter Distagon. I was giving an example between the 35 millimeter Distagon and the uh, 35 millimeter uh, Sigma Art series. But I think you get the point there. Remember where the Z1 went to? That's kind of fascinating. Anyway, um. There we go. There's Z1. This is what happens when you drink too much coffee in one day. Um, remember, we're not talking about the camera side. We're not talking about lens IQ. You need to talk about micro contrast. What makes this pop? You think, well, this is a contrasty looking picture. This is taken with uh, in color, obviously, with the Zeiss Distagon 35 millimeter f2. But then it's been converted to black and white. But if the micro contrast isn't there to begin with, then you're not going to have this. Uh, so we used to call these silver prints. Um, obviously, they have to be printed correctly, but we don't have to worry about enlargers and stop baths and developer anymore. At least not the rest of the sane people like me that uh, don't shoot film anymore. <laughs> not that I've got anything horrible against film, although I've shot too damn much of it in my life. Um, it, the Sigma Art can't do this. I mean, it can't. Now, the Sigma Art does have a specific look to it, but it has horrible uh, shadow uh, uh, tonal values. It's just muddy. I mean, if you've got some nice lighting, I mean, it will, it will capture it. But if you've uh, got uh, these intermediate tonal values like this, it's not going to get it. Or it's in the shadows. I mean, like the countless, there's a Sigma example, just absolutely horrible. Looks good enough until you give it a basis of comparison. It's like, well, that's good. Okay, let's shoot the same thing with the Zeiss. Wow, what a difference. Or a good Nikkor. You know, so let's uh, take a look at uh, Sigma 1 over here. And you think, well, that's fog, or, you know, that's the pollution back there, or it's uh, out of focus. No, that isn't the case. This person shooting, everything here and here is still within the depth of field. I mean, he's got it at an affinity for these people way the hell over here. They're perfectly sharp. But they're in the sunlight. This is not in the sunlight. Everything here on this side of the mountain is mud. It's mud! Now that has its own specific artistic quality and it's kind of dreamy for pictures and it's perfectly valid to desire that. But this lens is inferior. It's inferior construction. It costs as much as a Zeiss lens. Why the hell would you buy it? Why? It's not a good lens. You can step into any photography store, okay? Don't take my word for it. Talk to someone that's been behind the counter for 20 years and said, here, here's $5, and I want you to tell me the truth for the next five minutes. How many of these Sigma lenses are returned because of decentered elements or the aperture just took a crap on itself? Like, oh, okay, yeah, 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 we got that issue. We're always returning them. That's exactly what they'll tell you, okay? I promise you that, okay? I've done it myself many times, although I didn't have to pay $5. I got the information for free. This is the case. Why would you pay the same amount of money for something that sucks? Okay? Not only inferior construction, but it doesn't render images with the micro contrast and uh, uh, doesn't even have the same IQ. But even if it did have the same IQ, which it doesn't, it doesn't have that to translational perceptual depth. And it also is a high element count lens, which doesn't have rendered depth, okay? So there's a huge difference here. Anyway, thanks for watching. It's video number two. If you watch these two videos, you will know more about lenses than 99% of the photographers out there because nobody out there has got a damn clue, really. Few people do, but nobody does on what, uh, what uh, micro contrast is and how it's important, okay? And why it's different from lens IQ, but kind of looks the same, okay?
Got it. Catch you later. Thanks. Bye.